Welcome to Accounting, Finance and Banking, specifically the journal. Objectives 1. To define a journal. 2. To explain the importance of a journal. 3. To describe the format of a journal. 4. To explain the use of various types of journals. And 5 to make entries in various types of journals and post the totals in the ledger. A journal is a financial or accounting record where business transactions are recorded in a chronological order as transactions take place. The totals are then posted to the relevant ledgers. A journal obtains its details from the source documents, namely a cash receipt, cash payment, a cash sale, an invoice, credit note, payment voucher, statement of account, etc. A journal is also known as a subsidiary book, not the main book book of original entry that is the starting point where we start recording transactions for bookkeeping and accounting and finance a book of prime entry or primary entry a diary or a day book let us match the journals with their source documents a sales journal or debtors journal. When you make sales, you issue debtors with an invoice so that they can pay for the goods that they have bought on credit. So we call that a sales invoice, which is a copy retained in the business as you send the original invoice to the debtors. Purchases or creditors journal. When you buy goods on credit, you are issued with an original invoice by your creditors demanding payment for the goods that you bought on credit. That invoice is also called invoice received or purchases invoice. Return inwards or sales returns journal. When you sell goods on credit, some goods may be returned by debtors because either they are defective excess or what was not specified so you will issue a credit note to the debtors when you issue a credit note to the debtors you will remain with a copy of the credit note as you send the original credit note to the debtors so that they do not pay the whole amount. That credit note is also called credit note retained. Sales outwards or purchases returns. When you return goods you had bought or purchased from creditors or some of the goods the creditors will send you a credit note so that you do not pay the amount indicated on the credit note because it was either extra money on the goods that you had bought or some goods were defective or the goods that you weren't in need of so you will receive an original credit note or credit note received. When you make cash payments, you receive a receipt. So, 
a receipt that you receive or original receipt from those you give or hand over money to after buying a certain item will be recorded in the cash payments journal or on the credit side of analysis cash book or on the credit side of the three column cash book. Remember receipts are recorded on the DR side and the payments are recorded on the credit side of the three column, one column or even two column cash book. Cash receipt journal, analysis cash book and three column cash book, both on the DR side, get their information from the retained copy of the receipt or receipt copy. Then the petty cash book obtains its information from the petty cash voucher. Importance of a journal in a business. One, it is a memorandum of first record in the process of recording business transactions that occur before posting to the ledger. Hence, one cannot lose records. It is a guard's records in the business. The journal records all business transactions according to the date of the journal, showing the chronological records of all business transactions. Hence, it is easy to retrieve documents in the business. Jano can reduce errors and omission of transaction records or incomplete transaction records. It functions as a control tool. Jano ensures there is mathematical accuracy of records since all details of a transaction are written or captured at the time of recording or posting from the original documents. It relieves the ledger of unnecessary details, hence ledgers are not cumbersome. If you find any inconsistencies or mistakes in the ledger or trial balance, then you can go back to the journal again to correct the mistakes or find out where the mistakes are Hence, it acts as a reference record to your financial statements. The format of a journal. We have five columns. The dates, details or particulars, the document from where the journal is obtaining information from, the ledger folio page, and the amount column in the currency that you're using in a certain country. Of course, you have the title. So, in the date column, we record the transaction date as transactions take place. The details are narration or a narration of the transaction that is taking place. Ledger folio is the page where the transaction will be recorded in the ledger account. Then you have the receipt number, debit note number, credit note number, invoice number, etc. according to the type of journal or records that you are making. And then the amount involved in the transaction. We have several types of journals, namely the sales journal or debtors journal, where you record transactions involving selling items to debtors on credit. Then you have sales returns or return inwards journal where you record those items that have been returned after you sell to them on debtors in case they do not need them, they are extra or they are defective. Then you have purchases or creditors or a bought journal. This is a journal where you record transactions involving buying items on credit 
from creditors or suppliers. Then you have purchases, returns, or return outwards journal. When you return goods outwards from the business to the creditors where you purchased them from, you record those transactions in the purchases, returns, or return outwards journal. Then you have cash receipt journal where you record transactions involving money received in cash in a business. We have cash payments or disbursement journal where you record transactions involving paying out money to others, cash money. Then you have the three column cash book, both as a journal where we have the DR, that is discount received and discount allowed as two journals in the three column cash book, as well as the ledger, the cash account at the bank account. Then you have the petty cash book, both as a journal and as a ledger. The analysis cash book, both as a journal and as a ledger. The general journal, which is also called the journal or journal proper. An example, Mosembi wholesalers made the following credit sales to the following customers during the month of February 2012. February 4th, they sold on credit to Ndika, goods worth 400, to Kidera, goods worth 600, and to Masiga, goods worth 750 shillings. On 6th, Musembi wholesalers sold to Masisi goods worth 500 shillings. On February 10th, Musembi wholesalers sold goods worth 250 to Muhonja and 300 shillings to Otwetche. On 15th February, Musembi wholesalers sold goods worth 450 to Ndika and 500 shillings to Kidera. These are repeat buyers or debtors because they had bought items on for these two, Kidera and Dika. On 25th, Mosembi wholesalers sold goods worth 800 shillings to Mushevere and 150 to Moduda. So, we'll establish a sales journal to capture those credit sales to those debtors. So, Mosembi Wholesaler Sales Journal for February 2012. We have the date column, particulars or details, invoice number, ledger folio number or page, and the amount in shillings. So, on 4th of February, Mosembi Wholesaler sold goods worth 400, 600, and 750 to Ndika, Kidera, and Masiga respectively through invoice numbers 011, 012, and 013 respectively and recording the same transaction, the sales ledger, page 11, page 12, and page 13. So Ndika has a page, the sales ledger, page 11, Kidera, page 12, and Masiga, page 13. On 6th, Musembi wholesalers sold goods worth 500 to Masisi and wrote him an invoice number 14 and opened a sales ledger page for Masisi, page 14. On 10th, Musembi wholesalers sold goods worth 250 and 300 to Mohonja and Otwecha respectively through invoice numbers 15 and 16 and occupying page 15 and 16 of the sales ledger. On 15th, Ndika and Kidera did a repeat buying and through an invoice number 17 and 18 but they had a ledger page, the sales ledger, 
page 11 and 12. That's why we have these two arrows to show that they are still, or we are still recording these disease ledger. And the amounts involved were 450 and 500 respectively. On 25th, Musendi wholesalers had, had new buyers or uh, those who bought goods on credit or debtors, Mushavere and Moduda. And he used invoice number 19 and 20 to sell to them on credit. And Mushavere was allocated page number 17 of the sales ledger because we had reached page number 16. And then Moduda occupies or occupied page number 18. 800 shillings and 150 shillings were involved respectively. So the totals for the month of February were 4,700 and they are to be posted on the credit side of the sales account. Since a sales account is a revenue account and when a revenue account increases, it is credited. The same is repeated for other transactions involving buying returns ETC. So a sales journal or debtors journal will use a copy invoice and the transactions will be referenced in the sales ledger. A purchases journal or creditors journal will use details from the invoice, original invoices, eh? and they'll be referenced in the purchases ledger. The purchases returns journal will get its details from the original or received credit note and will be referenced in the purchases returns ledger. The sales returns journal or debtors journal we will use a copy or retained credit note number and that will be referenced or be shown in the sales returns ledger. Cash payment journal will use the original receipt and will be entered in the cash book and the cash receipts journal will be referenced using a copy of the cash receipt under the cash book. Then we have those ledger accounts for the individuals as well as the sales account. Dika on 4th of February bought goods worth 400 and on 15th repeat buying goods worth 450. Totals 850. They will be brought down as a debit balance because they are debtors and debtors are assets that exhibit debit balances. Kidera on 4th bought goods worth 600 on credit and on 15th bought goods worth 500 on credit. Total 1,100 with a debit balance of 1,100 at the end of February. Masiga bought goods worth 750 on credit so a debit balance of 750 at the end of the month. Masisi bought goods worth 500 on 6th of February. So a debit balance at the end of February of 500 because he bought nothing else for that month from Mosembi. Mohonja bought goods worth 250 no other transaction we have a debit balance of 250 at the end of the month or Twetche bought goods worth 300 on 10th of february no other transaction so a debit balance at the end of february of 300 mushevere bought goods worth 800 no other transaction in february so we have just a total of 800 as balance carried down or a debit balance at the end of that month. Moduda bought goods worth 150, no other transaction, so the totals 150 as balance brought down 
or the debit balance at the end of that month. Then the sales account will be credited, credited with 4,700 shillings from those total debtors. And it will exhibit a credit balance since on the credit side you have more amounts than on the debit side. Another example, the following information relates to Madhya traders for the month of January 2013. Invoices received on 6th January 12th and 18th from Modonomi Limited, Kimani, Traders and Lucy Enterprises, 70,000, 150,000 and 50,000 respectively. He is receiving invoices from Madhya, yeah? he's receiving invoices, sorry, from Modoni, Kimani and Lucy because he had bought goods on credit and the invoices are demanding for payment. Invoices issued. Madhya traders sold goods on credit and issued Faida traders on 5th, Endelea Limited on 10th and Caluax Limited on 15th invoices to demand for payment for 12,000, 100,000 and 120,000 respectively. Madhya traders issued credit notes to FIDA traders and Adelaide Limited on 5th and 13th for 12,000 and 6,000 to reduce their debt with him. And he received credit notes from Modomi and Kimani traders of 5,000 and 1,000 on 7th and 14th so that he can pay less to Modoni and Kimani traders respectively. Additional information on 8th January, Madhya traders sold machinery on credit to Kawao retailers for 50,000. On 9th of January, he bought electronic equipment on credit from Highland retailers worth 8,000. On 10th January, he, bought, he brought in 5,000 into the business from own sources. So you are required to draw the relevant journals for these transactions. This is the answer. One, purchases journal. We bought or Madhya traders bought from Modoni, Kimani and Lucy Enterprises on 6th, 12th and 18th goods worth 70,000, 150,000 and 50,000 respectively totaling to 270,000 which will be entered in the purchases journal and a narration is given being total posted to purchases account for that month. In the sales journal, Madhya traders sold goods worth 10,000, 100,000, and 120,000 to Fida Traders and Delaya Limited and Calworks on 5th. 10th and 15th January respectively and the total sales or credit sales were 230,000 and a narration is uh, posting totals for sales during the month to the sales account. Then after selling to FIDA, Endelea and Calworks, FIDA and Endelea on 5th and 13th, returned goods worth 12,000 and 6,000 respectively. That is reflected in the sales returns journal. And the total for that journal that will be posted in the sales returns ledger is 18,000. And a narration is given that the totals are to be posted to the sales returns account on the credit side. Then we have Purchases Returns Journal. Madhya traders returned goods to Modoni Limited and Kimani Limited on 7th and 14th 
equivalent to 5,000 and 1,000 shillings respectively. And the total is 6,000 being a record of purchases returns to these persons. And then there is additional information on 8th January, 9th January and 10th. On 8th, sold machinery on credit to cow retailers for 50,000. That will necessitate that Madhya traders establish a general journal or general proper or the journal. So, on January 8th, DR Kwao retailers, 50,000. These are debtors. They have bought an item on credit. So, debtors has increased Kwao traders or retailers. You record that in the DR side because that is what will happen in the individual account. Then machinery, credit machinery account, 50,000. Machines have reduced in value or, and number in the business, sold machinery. On 9th, bought electricity electronic equipment on credit from Highland retailers. We have increased a fixed asset known as electronic equipment by 8,000. You debit that account for the equipment they have increased. And then the lowland retailers who are creditors have increased. We have bought on credit a machine worth 8,000. The narration to record purchase of electronic equipment on credit from Lowland retailers. On 10th of January, Madhya traders brought in 5,000 into the business from, this, from own sources, meaning that there was an investment. So, invested cash. Cash account increases by 15,000 and capital which is being injected increases by 15,000. You debit cash, you credit capital account. The narration is recording additional capital in cash brought in by the owner. Then we look at the general journal or general proper or the journal. This is used to record all the transactions that cannot be recorded or entered in other subsidiary books. And these other subsidiary books are sales journal, purchases journal, sales returns journal, purchases returns journal, cash payments journal, cash receipts journal. The journal shows the accounts to be debited and those to be credited. As you can see, those accounts to be debited and those accounts to be credited. The narration is a short description of the transactions being recorded. Since the general journal contains various transactions which are not similar or related. This is a record of sales. This is a record of buying. This is a record of bringing in investments. They are not related. So, what are some of the transactions that are recorded in a general journal? One, the purchase of fixed assets on credit and sale of fixed assets on credit. Since those that are bought or sold on cash basis are recorded in the cash account, the relevant side, and the specific asset. Then we have opening entries for the financial year or those businesses that do not have proper records or incomplete records. Then we have closing entries and other transfers for the financial year. We have correction of accounting errors, error of omission, error of commission, duplicating error, complete reversal of entries, error of principal, ETC. Then writing of bad debts, issue of shares and debentures by companies, purchase of shares and debentures by companies, etc. The format of the general journal. We have the title, then you have five columns, 
date particulars for you. DR or debit column and the amount or the currency, credit column and the currency. The date is where you record transactions as they take place. Particulars involves the accounts involved or affected by the transaction. Then you have folio. This is the ledger page number where the transaction will appear. Then you have the debit column where those transactions that exhibit a debit balance will be recorded and credit column where those transactions or the part of the transaction that involves credit entries will be recorded. An example, record the following transactions in a general journal of GG traders. On 10th January 2012, a machine worth 60,000 was purchased on credit from Metalworks Limited. On 20th January 2012, an old tractor worth 50,000 was sold on credit to Akulima Enterprises. On 12th February 2012, office furniture worth 80,000 was sold on credit to Burembe Restaurant for 90,000. On 20th April 2012, a machine whose book value was 80,000 was sold to Yusuf Traders for 50,000 on credit. On 30th of April 2012, the following assets and liabilities were not properly recorded. Premises 70,000, creditors 40,000, machinery 50,000, cash 5,000, stock 5,000, and bank 10,000. This is how we record that. This is GG Traders General Journal for 2012. Date, particulars, folio, DR, CR columns. So on 10th of January, GG Traders purchased the machinery on credit from Metalworks. So machines increase and you debit the General Journal. The same way you would debit the machine account if machines increase because it is an asset. You credit Metalworks Limited. Metalworks have lost a machine worth 60,000. They have sold to us. That's why you are recording that transaction here. And a narration being a record of purchase of machinery on credit. On 20th of January, GG Traders sold an old tractor on credit to Akulima Enterprises. So Akulima gains 50,000 worth of a tractor and the tractor's account in GG Traders General Journal is credited or decreased by 50,000. On 12th of February, GG Traders sold office furniture at a gain on credit. So they sold to Burembe. Burembe gave us 90,000. And then the office furniture account loses one of the furniture worth 80,000. And then there is a gain or a profit out of selling an item of 80,000 for 90,000, that is 10,000, recorded on the CR side. Then on 20th of February, we sold an office machine at a loss on credit to Yusuf Traders. So Yusuf Traders gains a machine worth 50,000 or gains a machine at 50,000 and we make a loss out of selling an 80,000 machine for 50,000, a loss of 30,000. So these are recorded on the debit side and this on the credit side. So machine account loses 80,000 worth of a machine. Loss on disposal, this is an expense to the business and expenses when they increase, they are debited, 30,000. And then use of traders, a data also increases by 50,000. Data when they increase, or they are, when they are created, we debit that transaction. Then we have 
transactions that took place on that 8th of April, all of them will be recorded together. Premises, creditors, machinery, cash, stock, bank. So, those accounts that exhibit a debit balance will be recorded first and then those that exhibit a credit balance will be recorded last. So, debit premises 70,000, debit column, debit machines 50,000, debit column, debit stock 5,000, debit column, debit bank account 5,000, 10,000, you debit or put in the debit side, debit cash 5,000, debit column, then creditors, when they increase, you record that transaction at the credit side. So in this case here, it will also appear on the credit column. And then, since we have to have a balancing figure because we are looking at closing balances that were not properly recorded, we have to establish the whole account that is the whole worth of a business assets liabilities capital we have the assets here and then you have the liabilities here so capital will be the balancing figure which is 105 because the totals are 145,000 thank you remember to subscribe and like my videos and channel on YouTube my name is Edward Kariuki Madenge karyukiedit2010 at gmail.com Welcome.